Kubor Nagashlem to Nongsan Hima. The St. Edmunds College has been in the past few years, and it has been in the past few years. It has been in the past few years, and it has been in the past few years, and it has been in the past few years, and it has been in the past few years. Hagan ni kasi lapan long yung kajing yung paleo jingmot ng panel discussion. Halo or kapang ka ba ang? Should the government of Meghalaya establish a special school for persons with disabilities? Or should inclusive education be strengthened? Bahato la kasorkar dila kan seng yung kiskul ka ba karpang na kabenta kito ka ba rin jing dunah kiti khodmet? Lani kan panklan yung rukom hikay kalum lang ya baro. Hagan ni kasi na kaliang kong CD Lingwa MCS kalalong kum kakongsan but Dr. B. R. Simon Coel, who lalong kum sumbot kong san. Lapin long ru yugi inter-college debate competition ha gani ka sngi. Halo or ka pang strengthening inclusive education in Meghalia is a better government strategy than establishing special schools for persons with disabilities. Ka ba mut ban yo ay gar kong san shar ka ba day ban nang pan klan yi gar kong hikai ban yi ka ba seng yi ki skol na ka ban taa ki ba dan jing du na hagi dikhat men. Hagan ni kasi nila pang songshet siya siya lang magiging rawaya na kakwaya ng St. Edmunds College. It gives me great joy to be standing here today at the October edition of Empire Fest 2.0 where we've gathered to focus on education and academia. These are the two pillars that are essential for empowering persons with disabilities and ensuring their rightful place in society. Our journey began in the year 2001 with the setting, setting up of the District Disability Resources Center that is the DDRC in Civil Hospital Shillong under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment Government of India. Post-2005, this program continued with the support of the Social Welfare Department, Government of Meghalaya. And this program is being run by the State Society for the Implementation of Rehabilitation for Persons with Disabilities. In Meghalaya, we recognize that PWDs face numerous challenges that hinder their full participation in society. These challenges include barriers to education, employment, and social inclusion. It is our responsibility to address these gaps through innovative solutions and collaborative efforts. I encourage other educational institutions to follow this model and work closely with us to build inclusive classrooms where every student, regardless of ability, can reach their full potential. As we continue our efforts through MPRFS 2.0, I urge each one of you here today to reflect on how we can collectively make education more inclusive and accessible. Let us continue to break down barriers, challenge stereotypes, and most importantly, ensure that no one is left behind. You are present here. We are students from Duty Street School, Shula. And now we are going to present two songs. And the first song that we are going to present is the Jugo and the Queen.
But today, if I represent the government, I had the opportunity to be in the Supreme Court day before yesterday, and I came late at night, and for the first time ever, the Juvenile Justice Committee of the High Court, run and headed by chairperson, uh, her name is Mrs. Justice Naga Ratna, for the first time is talking about children with disabilities. And so, to, uh, and, uh, in the course of their talking, they were not saying that we want to use the word impairment, visual, audio, it's a disability. As I was telling, as I came up, I was asking one to hold my back, hold my back. I said, I will not use the word DIS from the front, but I have an ability limitation also. I need each, we need each other. On this slide, I cannot but celebrate again, this is this institution that does not compromise on the faith in their sovereign. So I would use the word, ac the, the, the acronym, disability, D stands for the divinely inspired spirit that still moves on, that today you carry on with the legacy of Edmund Rice. He was very rich, he was very affluent, but he saw the plight of the marginalized compounded with the plight of his daughter, and this led him to move on and to give of his time, his resources and in his investment in the cause of those who were mistreated, in the cause of the voiceless, in the cause of those who were who were really downtrodden and oppressed because in those days where he came from 200 years ago, uh, Catholic boys do not have a right to education. Education is a power. Education, um, let me just tell you, out of the 106 108 schools, universities in America, 106 were founded on the Christian principle of the cross, the word, and you cannot enter some of the Ivy institutions if you don't know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Greek language. Why they believe this is because, see, the human name, human body, we have, we are comprised of three components. I ask this a lot with say tolerance, intuition, no, those are religious answers. Three components that make us is spirit. Soul, which is the mind. What we are doing now is soul feed. The songs we heard from Jyoti Sroth, thank you so much, it's a soul feed. The songs we heard from Edmunds Choir, it's a soul feed, thank you so much. The words we've had from Matt and Dr. Uh, uh, Rupa, those were soul feet and so on. And, uh, the doctors who are here in this college too, Dr. Wayaka and all. So we were very enriched in that uh, situation. Then we have the body for which we clothe ourselves. We have this roof on our top, uh, on our head, and we have the buildings to house us in the structure. And then we have the spirit. The spirit lives on. So when we use this word disability, when we use the word, when we are identified by the condition that we are in, I think we are the ones who really are opinionated. Because at the end, it's the body that is housed inside the spirit. It's not about the body, who we are, what we do, what is defining us. So if it, we can go into that situation where we celebrate the divinity in these acronyms. Number two, imagination. I was in Delhi, one of the judges, high what they said, empathy is not a lack of awareness. Empathy is a lack of imagination. So can we celebrate the fact that empathy today, which we use commonly now, it's when we have an imagination. We go beyond to think of what it is like to not be able to have the locomotor, not able to have the, you know, the learning aids, be it visual, the audio, or the, the speech and learning uh, elements. So can we therefore use this word empathy now to imagine and be in the place of those who don't have what we have? I congratulate the State Resource Center on Disability Affairs. Dr. N. B. Lalu is there at the hem of the affairs and St. Edmunds College for organizing this program. And to our Honorable Chief Guest, Mrs. C. D. Lingua, who is the Commissioner for persons with disability. Madam, with your help and vision, I hope the society will be able to promote an awareness, equality, and empowerment for persons or professionals with physical or mental conditions. I'm glad to hear from Dr. M. Pilalu about the efforts that they are providing the scholarships for persons with 
this ability for the young minds, not only in the field of education, but maybe to showcase their abilities in different platforms. So is, I'll always remember us as they. If you want to go fast, you may choose to go alone. But my friends, if you want to go far, you need to go along. A very good afternoon. On our speaker shop, I am Nyo Nyong Tau. I am Nyo Nyong Tau. See you number four. Today, we'd like to warmly embrace the motion and champion it by saying it. Alright, there has been a lot of debate now from my worthy opponents regarding the inclusivity being real. Well, if you're asking a question of reality and inclusivity, here's the example of big city at this college who has students like me. So are you still going to question it? You need to rethink. And uh, moving forward uh, regarding uh, one of my proponents, uh, Coach, I'd like to expand a little bit. You know, Microsoft did a survey, and uh, first, when it did the survey with the word disability, it was only 20% of the people. But when the word disability was changed to difficult, it extensively raised around 65%. I mean, if you're talking about disability, it's about not being able to do something or the other, rather than not having some express uh, or not having one of the senses or something. So then on what point are you arguing that we need special schools? Well, and if you're also arguing for special schools, my dear worthy opponents, I would like to request you to come and walk in my shoes, my shoes, to have a better understanding who has more than 12 plus experience of both in special school and inclusive schools. My worthy opponent, through you, speak us up with deep respect. Are you trying to segregate us? Are you trying to limit us? Are you trying to limit our exposure to the mainstream? Well, if you say if it's not, you're actually really doing it. I'll say why. You are advocating for special schools where we need special care. We do need special care, I agree. But that can be integrated into inclusive school. The teachers already existing can be trained for that. And all the existing special 
if I'm wrong, you have to this. Because we're talking with papers, not practically. Well, I have the experience. And I probably say that inclusive education is long term investment, is the future of the whole world. So, Meghalaya also, I would like to give Meghalaya the global standard practice. Because US, Canada, and other international countries have been already doing it. So, as Nelson Mandela says, education is the most powerful weapon to bring change. So please, educate yourself properly about inclusivity and everything. Hence, you can be really more aware about what inclusivity is. Thank you. In fact, we have had a very insightful debate today. A debate which I personally felt was of a very high intensity at times and also was <clears throat> of a lot of merit and a lot of quality. I'm indeed very impressed to see the performance of our young people here. While sitting there, I was already observing who would be the future politicians here. <laughs> At least someone who joined me also, right? Indeed, they had a lot of quality debating and uh, really impressed and thank you so much. That was really nice. I, for once, I thought I was somewhere in the assembly. <laughs> anyway, um, the, my remarks would be like we have just witnessed a very insightful debate on the merits uh, and the challenges of the inclusive education versus the special schools. And both approaches have their strengths and limitations and both teams have made very compelling arguments. Inclusive education, as we heard, is built on principle of social equality and integration. It encourages children with disabilities to participate in mainstream education, fostering a sense of belonging and mutual respect. The inclusive model builds a society that celebrates diversity and ensures that children with disabilities grow up as part of the larger community. Yet, as we also heard, the success of inclusive education depends heavily on adequate resources, teacher training, and infrastructure. Without proper support, inclusive schools may not be able to cater to the diverse needs of all the students, potentially leaving some behind. On the other hand, Spatial schools offer tailored education, environments that can provide personalized care and specialized training for students with more severe disabilities. These schools excel in focusing on the individual needs of each student, ensuring that they receive the specialized attention and skills training necessary to thrive. However, there is a risk of segregation and exclusion from the mainstream society. So, where do you find the balance? Perhaps the answer lies not in choosing one system over the other, but in creating a flexible, integrated approach that offers the best of both the worlds. A system where students can benefit from inclusive settings, are given the resources and support they need to succeed in mainstream schools, 
At the same time, those who require specialized care have access to well-equipped special schools that cater to their unique needs. Ultimately, our goal should be to ensure that every child, regardless of their abilities or disabilities, receives an education that empowers them to reach their full potential. Whether through inclusive education or special schools, the focus must remain on the well-being and holistic development of every child. Together, we can build an education system that is flexible, compassionate, and truly inclusive for all.